Hey beautiful souls, welcome to your June monthly reading and wow, what a great month we're going to have here because we are entering the summer solstice in the northern hemisphere and the winter solstice in the uh, southern hemisphere. So we're going to be playing a little game of hot and cold if you ever did that as a child where you are, you know, hide something and as you get closer to it, it's you're hotter, hotter, warmer, warmer, you know, and then and also, oh, cold, you're getting cold, cold as you get further away from it. So we're going to be asking Spirit a couple of things like, what are you fiery red hot on target with? What does Spirit want you to know that you are at your higher, higher vibration? And then what are you icy blue cold about? What is unseen? Maybe what are you having some lower love vibration that you have an opportunity, if you want to, to raise that for a higher experience? There's no right, there's no wrong, there's just experience here. So it's not meant as going, you know, pointing fingers. It's strictly what we're asking spirit. What is unseen that could help me have a higher experience if I choose to accept that mission? Also, Mercury is fully direct now, so it's a great time to launch new things. Whereas before we were like revisiting things, revising things, maybe even planning things, but now is the time to launch. So excited for this as well. I, of course, I have readings for each individual zodiac sign. If you want to check out like different areas of your life too. I'm going to pop up a little screen here. And this chart shows each of the planets and what part of our life they rule over. So if you know the zodiac sign for each of your planets in your birth chart, you can you know look at and, and watch the video for that particular sign. If you don't know your sign, you can always get a birth chart for free online. There's a lot that are offered out there. Uh, I personally use astro.com. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but uh, just a great uh, group of people that offer offer it for free. So you can check that out as well. Uh, it's like looking out of a house, right? There's all these different windows and you have the front yard view, the backyard view, the side views, the second story, third story views. And that's what all of these different planets give us different aspects, different viewpoints so we can get a clearer picture of our lives. So if you want to check those out, you can do that. But I'm going to jump in to your reading for this sun sign and any other planets right now. All right, Scorpio, this is your monthly reading for the month of June, and I'm going to be starting a new way, at least for this month, of doing the reading. And so I hope you like it. Let me know in the comments below whether you do or not. So we are going to be playing that hot or cold game, right, where we're going to start off with the cold. And this is the overall for the month of June, just what Spirit wants you to know. That's on the lower level of love vibration that can be looked at if you so wish to, if you're looking at raising your love vibration. So uh, we're going to start off here with the archetypes cards from the Wild Unknown series. So we'll start here and see what area of your life or what uh, information Spirit would like you to know around that. Okay, they do want this one right here on top. And we have the Queen. Dun, dun, dun. So we have that beautiful card there. We'll put that right here in the center-ish. Guess that'll be good there. And that is card number 11. So a beautiful uh, card, I'm sure 11, you know, the 11, 11, that just definitely, definitely stands out to people, right? So this is about the Empress, the Mother Queen, the Sovereign. So like her counterpart, the King, the Queen has a dualistic nature. Either she presides over the realm with grace and eloquence that comes from the heavens to uplift the spirit of others, or she falls into petty, contemptuous moods, casting a shadow across the land. If the king is the ego, the queen is the expression of that ego in the world. She's the lotus's bloom, the dancer's bow, the moon's radiant reflection. And when the queen is seated in her rightful and righteous place, she's patient and forgiving. She waits for the grace of God and goddess to move through her, striving and grasping for nothing. 
To be the benevolent leader, to embody the queen, is to settle into deep trust, resolve, and power. The royal queen fears nothing, for divinity itself cradles her heart. Oh, beautiful. And it says, the queen does not accept the hand of a prince, but claims the throne, knowing the king draws near. She's a magnet for the fully embodied masculine and entertains nothing less. So she doesn't settle for the prince because she knows a king is on the way. Uh, it mentions here, read Cleopatra's monologue in Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, Act 5, Scene 2. Then read about uh, Inanna, I-N-A-N-N-A, Tara, T-A-R-A, and Hera, H-E-R-A. Because when you're in the higher vibration of this energy, you're the embodiment of grace and courage and resolve and stillness. But when we're in the lower vibrational energies, right, this is what we're pulling this for, we can be a little vain, we can be wrathful, self-righteous, and demanding. To go deeper into these emotions, uh, you can read Nikki Giovanni's Ego Tripping and listen to Nina Simone singing Stars at the 1976 Montreux Jazz Festival. So some great energy there. You know, there's this uh, undertow of, you know, in each moment we're either a beautiful, giving, loving um, emperor or empress who is loved or when our little child self feels unsafe or out of control, that's when it becomes a tyrant. <laughs> when it's wanting to get power back, it needs to feel safe. So it takes, it takes, it takes. Uh, and so it's a tyrant or a dictator instead of a loving uh, or loved, uh, you know, leader. So I like that this is saying that there is some, when the fears arise, when those things appear in your life, you know where they are. Um, and you definitely feel the difference in them because you're normally like a giving um, you know, individual, but when you go into fear mode, there it just is telling you that there's some triggers that do take you into, I need to control this, I need to be the tyrant and the dictator, right? <laughs> I know, Scorpio, I know. Uh, and then we look here in the brighter, the higher vibrational area, uh, and this is the Crystal Medicine Oracle. And we're just going to see what uh, medicine um, can be used to help this higher vibration that can help lift this up for you uh, outside of okay, what it already uh, mentioned there. And the card already made itself known. And you've got Retreat. Beautiful, beautiful card there. And we're going to put that right here. Card number 24. And let's see what this brings in for you. So you have attracted this card into your awareness today as it is now time to retreat. And in the fast paced world in which we live, it's uh, easy to find yourself burnt out and experiencing mountains of stress, which can cause overload, exhaustion, anxiety, and depression. It is extremely important not to get caught up in the intensity of it all and take a step back and retreat. <laughs> so that's, you know, you know, we're being a tyrant trying to control everything in the kingdom, right? Well, it's time for a retreat. Because when you can give yourself the time to stop, Breathe and be still. The opportunity will arise to rejuvenate your mind, your body, and spirit on a deep level. Are you burning the candle at both ends? Is the stress piling up in your life and making you feel overwhelmed? Are you burnt out and exhausted? Have you been wanting to go on that long-awaited holiday but never have the time? Whatever your circumstances, this card is highlighting how important it is for you to retreat. It's time to fill your cup up again, recharge your batteries, and create some sacred time for you to ground and center yourself. 
Do whatever is required to allow yourself to feel vibrant and alive, allowing the life force energy to flow freely through you once again and leaving you inspired and motivated to take on the world. Like a mountain, it is time to be in the stillness and receive the nurturing medicine of your soul in this time of rest. Wow. I like that. So obviously, you know, when we're talking about tyrants want to fight and battle and gain power, well, it's rather than fight, they're saying it retreat, right? And find this peace. The medicine here is the mountain. And it says there are hundreds of mountains on earth and each has its own energy or spirit. They are the keepers of the land and hold within them the memories of ancient times. And when you take the time to be still and connect, you can feel their presence. The energy of the mountain is strong and sacred and can feed the soul when you allow yourself to be still enough to receive their medicine. Mountains have always been regarded as sacred beings and looked at as a symbol of the heavens as they are close to the God source. Some Peruvian cultures believe that mountains once walked on the earth and when you look closely at them you can see faces in the rocks. Mountains certainly have a presence about them and there's no doubt they emit a strong energy. And it's time for you to be your own mountain, to be still and reconnect. Mm, I love that. And then green calcite is the crystal that can help. It, it uh, assists in relaxation. It does soothe the mind, body, and spirit. And it also nurtures the heart. So I like that. So good advice in switching those out. Now, um... In my readings, I usually use one uh, tarot deck. I'm going to be using two uh, for this month. Uh, and I separate the major arcana from the four suits of the minor arcana, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but these, um, the dark tarot here, are going to represent the coldness to get clarification on the cold. And then the naked heart tarot are going to be the um, for the, the heat. So let's see here about the queen here what um else they want you to know here through the dark tarot let me just shuffle these up a little bit first and we will see what comes through here just want to grab them all right so what else here for scorpio for what's at a lower vibrational energy what advice do you have so we can switch it up a little bit here and <laughs> we have the devil yeah so the devil does tell us here, um, it is the shadow. <laughs> so here's the shadow coming in um, for it here. Let me just move this back a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, it's Capricorn energy, which is this challenging, the shaking, the rattling of our belief systems. And things are brought up to us. Things are triggered so that we can realize the cage that we have ourselves in and all the pressure and the anxiety so that it can help us release from it. So this is, you know, with all this, uh, the queen here that you had um, underneath there, uh, the triggers that come up, the, uh, um, you know, enemies that come to the borders to shake and test and rattle the kingdom allows you to see what is it that you fear? What is it that, you know, you are caught up in and caged in? So I like that, that that's coming in here. And then we also, like I said, we'll pull here from the Naked Heart Tarot here and just see what else they want you to know around this medicine of the retreat and um, having that energy. All right. So what else for Scorpio here for the retreat here? Okay, and then you want this one right there. And we have the tower. Yeah. So the tower is the, you know, beautiful. Here's the removal, right? The, that something is removed out of our life on purpose for a purpose. 
there's a message that comes with the tower that life does not happen to us it happens for us and so when someone leaves our life they're not leaving us they're being removed out of our life to make space for the new to help us move further along in our path towards what is meant for us there so i like this energy coming in there definitely is this transformation that is happening and we'd like that we're going to put the two hearts here with the energies and we'll put that there okay so we do have this stepping away to allow the stuff to fall away and not to try to control it the tower is lightning hits it and it's removing out of our life it's not us removing things out of our lives there are things being removed out of for us so there is this step back and let things let the dust settle let things get removed let things get sorted and then you move into your power which we'll get more into here because as we move on here, we're going to be looking at the four different directions. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, you can reverse them. I'm going to have south here and north here. But if you are in the, the south, southern hemisphere, you could always reverse it. So you can see both of both hemispheres can see with the top and the bottom how much it resonates in the different areas of your life as well. And like the the others, we're going to have both a, uh, a hot card, which is about what you're doing already in this area of your life at the higher level of love vibration. And then we'll pick a, a shadow card, too, which will be the lower vibrational, what they want you to know that you could raise in that area of your life. As I mentioned, we're going to start with South, which is the fire element, and it's the suit of wands. And what that does it focuses in on our attention our ambition where we are focusing also our intention not just our attention and you know you can look at it as like spiritual energy in the spirit world as well uh, and so in addition to all of it, that information that's coming in when we look at the north we'll talk about like job and career but this will be could also include life purpose like a spark to live so let's take a look here and see where are you already just knocking it out of the ballpark and a high vibrational energy here in the spiritual side of your life all right so here we go and you've got the five of wands so there is quite a bit of transformation you've already made with your energies here where you've realized i feel maybe the tower here you already know that that you trust that when things are removed out of your life that you know it's happening for you because uh, the five of wands is a transformational energy of going from something that is fear to something that is loved and of love so i like this coming in here so you definitely have done that inner work you definitely are uh you know not surprised by this awareness that you know whatever happens in our life does happen for us just sometimes uh, when things get blasted out in the moment we don't understand why our old condemned shack is being blown down and burned up uh, until it's replaced by the insurance company with the castle and we're like oh i'm okay with that <laughs> and then we're gonna look here of course at the lower vibrational so in your spirit world here with your life purpose and intentions and focus uh, what can have the opportunity to be transformed here and you have the two of wands yeah the two of wands is a beautiful card because it tells us that every moment is either of unconditional love or the fear of losing conditional love you know the fear of failure the fear of rejection and whatever we focus our energy on is what does grow and expand so like in the case of the tower our energy does influence the tower uh, moment because um, there's faded stuff that's going to be removed out of our life no matter what but there are things that can be removed out of sooner or things that aren't part of our fate that can be repelled out of our life if we fear losing it our fear of losing it actually repels it out and if we fear something will come in we actually are drawing it in and those are the things you know that we can control 
our energy. So if we feel like we're if we're focusing on missing things, we'll we're telling the universe, I enjoy missing things. Can I have more things to miss? Can I miss things even more? <laughs> we're like, no, that's not what I want. But that's what our energy is doing when we're focusing our intention on it. Or if we're focusing on something we hate in our lives, we're telling the universe, I enjoy hating things. Please bring more things to hate. And then but we can transform that and change it to focusing on gratitude, right? Uh, the realm of unconditional love. And the more we focus on what we're grateful for, we're telling the universe, I enjoy being grateful for things. Can you bring me more things to be grateful for? So I like this. You already have been doing this transformation of energies uh, from what feels like conflict to peace and love. But there's still some opportunities to, to be aware of what we're focusing our energy on, especially when we get triggered, right? Because when we're triggered, we're all in to the fear and we're focusing on those things, right? Um, for each of these areas, we're also going to pull an oracle card um, for each of those. And this is just the awareness, the advice from spirit on what they want you to know around this particular world here. So I'm using the Cosmic Journey Oracle for this one here for the uh, fire. And let's see, what do we have here? All right, so this one right here. And you are perfectly imperfect. <laughs> I like it. Uh, and that is card number 34. We're going to put it right here. Let's see what that brings in here for you. We somehow want to be seen as perfect with absolutely no defects, holes, or scars. But those imperfections make you more beautiful rather than less. They give you more empathy and more strength to face anything. When the heart is cracked wide open, the light finds its way in. And that's how the song of our soul can flow into our lives. Crack wide open. Your pain has meaning. Your sorrow has held tremendous significance sorry, beyond uh, what you may have considered already. Embrace it all because your healed wounds become the medicine our world desperately needs now. I can talk. <laughs> now these come with a cosmic catalyst question so you can ask yourself, what greater meaning can I now see coming from my greatest suffering? In a cosmic checkbox, if you so wish to do this, it says, list five situations that cracked you wide open and then take an elevated stance. What have you learned from those situations? What good things in your life would not uh, would you not have without having had those experiences and experienced the situation or having learned what you did? Mm. So yeah, definitely there's this awareness that's coming in here uh, with this. Um, and you know, it's this, uh, again, the, there's, uh, you know, we talk about every moment is a choice of unconditional love or the fear of losing conditional love. Neither is right and neither is wrong. It just uh, allows us to have different experiences. We come from a place of unconditional love, so that's what we are, but we come here to experience the opposites. And so there's nothing wrong with choosing it, but it's just letting you know when you're done and you're ready to raise your vibration, you can, and there's nothing wrong with it trying not to judge yourself you're showing yourself the different two sides of yourself so you could like the deeper you understand conditional love the more you understand unconditional love the deeper you understand fear and uh, pain the more you understand courage and uh you know comfort right uh, chaos and peace um, anger and laughter, right? So we have these opposites that we do experience here. So I like this area of your life here. So it seems like they're just saying you you um, own where you invest your energy, but don't beat yourself up about it either because that also will take you in a kind of a spiral, right? <laughs> if you judge yourself for choosing wrong, then you're going to perpetuate it and keep yourself looping, not realizing you can leap off at any time into a different direction. So I like it. All right.
And then we move into the north, and the north is the earth element and uh, the sign of pentacles. And that's your physical world. It's our body, our money, our abundance, our job, our career. It's the outside world. So um, it can be about physical action that we're taking as well. So this is what, what does spirit want you to know around the physical world, that you are just knocking it out of the ballpark. All right, right off the bat here. And you have the seven of pentacles. Wow. So you've been really learning patience and knowing and embracing that it takes time. The last thing that grows on the fruit tree is the fruit. And you've been patient with letting things unfold. Uh, so I like that. You know, it's a very positive thing. And it can be also that you've learned that when, like, so a tower moment comes, that sometimes when we realize that whatever we were focusing on in the moment, that it... Um, or, you know, that we were looking and trying to grow and have expand when it doesn't bring us the fruit we want anymore. And once it's removed, we go with the flow of it too, going, well, I can grow a different crop now. You know, I just feel like there's this in the outside world, you really have learned to adjust with it and kind of go with the flow and trust the timing of things. And then we'll take a look here and see what in your physical world, the, uh, is that uh, maybe vibrating at the lower vibration and it's something that you can uh, rise and uh, bring higher here so for scorpio what okay for the physical realm what would you like them to know please okay All right, and you've got the ace of spheres the ace of pentacles so there is some new opportunity um, coming up in your in your life in the month of June that um, that you'll be able to take here but it has to do with um, trusting that you're worthy of this new opportunity that opens up that you don't have to stay uh, you know in the orchard of, of the apples that you uh, bought and created that if you want to now go into guacamole business and raise avocado trees you can raise avocado trees but it has to do with your relation of your worth to the outside world and go I am worthy of this and I'm not scared to take a change uh, take, I'm sorry take a chance at change coming in here uh, because it's uh, what you had that's coming to fruition you want more you want something different something more related to your your inner uh, you know worth so uh, we're also going to pull from the earth magic oracle here let's see what else they have to add on to that here all right <laughs> you have ancestors generations what a beautiful card here too all right and we'll put that right here and speaking of trees and family trees right <laughs> Maybe there's some change in your, your family uh, tree because it is generations and ancestors are those from whom we are descended with a lineage that starts with our parents and grandparents and stretches back hundreds and even thousands of years. We carry our ancestors' bloodline and are connected to them both genetically and spiritually in an underlying continuity of which we may only barely be aware. Although environment and circumstances right, contribute to shaping us, particularly when we're young, an innate thread of kinship exists that has run the course of history for thousands of years and is contained in our bodies and in our being. Since we are biologically and soulfully connected to these spirit beings, we can readily call upon them for guidance and assistance in matters concerning our family, our community, and ourselves. In this card's image, the hand symbolizes the constant connection with the past. The Australian Aborigines consider their ancestors the core of their spirituality and culture, and the rainbow spirit, the spirit being that created all of life on earth, intertwines herself through the hands, the fingers, representing how the Aborigines honor all of creation. No matter our lineage, we have much to learn from our ancestors. 
And the message for this card for you says, you have within you the blood of your ancestors and you are deeply connected to your lineage. The most immediate proof of that being the physical resemblance you have to your mother and father and perhaps even your grandparents. Yet beyond that, although unknown to your usual senses, you are connected to an ancestry that reaches back through the millennia. This is the time to call upon those ancestors, those who are of your bloodline, as well as those ancient ones who have walked the land that you now walk. In many indigenous cultures, it's believed that the essence of your ancestors inhibits many of the physical aspects of the land. In other words, they are in the trees, the water, the air, the animals, the store, the stones, their blood being in the very dirt and sand you tread upon. Next time you're outside, allow your senses to open to those ancestors who abide in the physical world, and any time at all, allow your heart to open to those spirits to whom you are related through your uh, heredity and those to whom you are connected by virtue of the land upon which you live. I think that's everything there. Yeah, I like that. So definitely this opportunities this change that you have coming in here this uh i love the you know the queen energy that we talked about in the beginning here that you are supported you do have a long lineage maybe you are a descendant of queen you know <laughs> queendom or kingdom right but i like this the trees and the changing and and that you're supported with this change and not to be afraid to do things differently than they've been passed down from generation to generation. Sometimes I get readings where um, they are ancestors are apologizing. Sorry, we didn't mean to, you know, pass that stuff on to you. But that's what's coming in here for that so far. So I like that. And then next we move to the east, which is the element of air in the suit of swords. And this is your mind, your thoughts, your beliefs, your stories that you put to things like what you choose. Each thing means it's your mental world. Um, so um, which also includes education. Uh, so we'll take a look here and see what are you rocking in your mental world right now? All right. Let me do like this here. Yeah, the Spirit of Swords, the King of Swords. So you definitely, they not only co-rule the swords with the Queen, but all the kings are given a second portion of air. So they are the masters of the mind or the masters of the air. And this is about that you have really been seeking higher knowledge, whether it's education in the human world through colleges and things like that, or um, and or seeking spiritually to the heavens above, really seeking after the capital T truce of the higher realm, which helps you slice away those small teachers, those fears, those triggers we talked about that no longer serve as well. So I like this. You have been seeking um, and you're an owner and connector to the capital T truce of the higher realm. Right, and then we'll take a look here and see what we have for the shadow. So what could you use, uh, where could you use some higher vibrational love um, in your mental world here? And you have the queen, here's the queen of swords. So this would be the queen of swords does balance heart and mind. Um, but she definitely has a lot, a lot, a lot of things on her mind. So I feel like with you getting the queen here and the queen here, that it is thoughts and beliefs and mindsets, those triggers, that is the great opportunity for this card here, that there are some ways of thinking, ways of believing that can be removed out of your life to allow things to move forward in a different way. So um, let's see here. We're going to pull the numerology guidance cards. Let's see what else they want to add into here about your mental adventure. So what else for Scorpio, please? All right, I do want this one here. And you've got change, card number five. So that is coming in and we'll put that right here. All right. 
So this card indicates a time of expected and unexpected change. You know, that tower can come unexpected too. So when anything can happen, and it usually does. So by drawing this card, you are being encouraged to think of your life as an adventure in which exciting opportunities could appear at any moment. Rather than fearing the unfamiliar and the unknown, you're urged to embrace expansion, movement, and change. This is a time to go with the flow and open yourself to opportunities that will improve your quality of life. Anything is possible and the wheels are set in motion. So be sure to play your part by moving closer to your dreams. You may be called upon to make changes in your mindset, your relationships, your residence, your lifestyle or career. Uh, wherever a shift is needed to serve your greater good. It's time to broaden your horizons and re-sparken your passion for life. In order to improve your current situation, you're being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life, cycles that are leading you toward a uh, time of movement and change. Procrastination, resistance, and fear only take you out of alignment. So surrender yourself to the opportunities that are about to present themselves. Trust that you're divinely loved and guided and you'll be shown the way. The affirmation for the card, I accept and surrender to the changes that improve my quality of life. So it is that trust, right? The queen trusts, you know, that everything's going to unfold perfectly and that they will, you know, um, um, have ring the highest experience of love, right? So there is this change coming in of mindset, balancing of heart and mind, allowing this beautiful, beautiful understanding of things to come into play. So I like that. And then the last suit, the last direction, of course, is yours. Uh, it is the West, the water element, and uh, it's all about love. It's the... Um, heart world so it's about the relationships that you have and um, how you love how you want to receive love so let's take a look here and see what are you rocking in this love department in your life let's take a look here all right so that is the one and you've got the ten of cups yeah feelings of fullness and overflowing for sure so you've really embraced the connecting to the high heart and feeling a deep deep love so you have been having these experiences you're able to tap in to this side of your life uh, which is great it's beautiful that you're able to um, do that because that is what inspires you in each moment to live a life of love um, instead so i like that for you and then let's take a look here and see where you could use some higher vibration um, pumped into a lower vibrational part of life Okay. All right. Yep, it's that one right there. Boom. And you have the five of cups. The num the again the five the number of change here, five coming in, and the five of cups does show that we have this power of choice. That you know, usually there's three cups that are spilt. And that's what we are taught to focus on, on, right? And so that feeds it and those grow those old emotions that we hold on to. But obviously you've been able to, you realize that there's a different love to be felt because you have the Ten of Cups here. So what the Five of, of Cups is allowing you to know is that you have the power to choose in each moment what you want to feel and where you want to go uh, in here. So uh, an opportunity is that when you do get dragged into... Uh, you know, the outside world, you know, like if a tower moment happens and we're like, oh my gosh, you know, instead we take a deep breath and go, okay, I know this is happening for me, like with that tower. And so this is opening up my life, opening this area of my life. I'm able to move forward in this direction. Also stepping into, I get to choose what emotion I feel in each moment. 
unconditional love or fears of losing conditional love. So there is an awareness that has been coming up here. I feel like it's like with the devil card that we had earlier, it's definitely being brought to your face so that you can release it and change things. So I like that. And then your final card for this reading is going to be from the Journey of Love Oracle. And let's see what else they have here for you. Alrighty. Nope, none of those. All right. So what's your final message for Scorps, right? There it is right there. And you have Across the Waters, card 23, another five number coming in here. But I love Across the Emotions, right? So let's take a look and see what message comes in here. All right. So you are being called across the waters as if crossing a bridge of light from one ocean to a far greater one. These waters are your emotional waters holding your feelings, your attitudes, your expectations, and your fears and doubts, as well as your hopes and dreams. So being called maybe to a timeout, to a retreat of some sort. It can seem like such a lot to navigate, and sometimes our waters feel overcrowded, as if swarms of people were descending into the ocean on a sweltering hot day. Hardly finding a space in the water to cool ourselves, we can find as though there is just no room for faith, trust, peace, and love. There's just too much happening in that water. We yearn for the cool, calm mountain lake, serene, giving echoing a gentle dispensation of grace. You are being called across the waters, out from an overcrowded sea into the cool spaciousness of an endless lake. So it's time to let go of some mental clutter, some attitudes, some thoughts, and as for help, <clears throat> I'm sorry, ask for help and bathe yourself in the green and gold rays of the healing color. Just imagine them cascading down around you and through you like a waterfall. It's a bit like you're moving into a new neighborhood in a cleaner and more spacious town. Might be a bit in unfamiliar at first, but soon enough, you'll enjoy the difference. And this oracle brings you a message. It is your time to think about something in a different light. Soon you will have a shift in perspective and feeling of overwhelm, stress, and uh, just too much going on will be replaced with serene trust and peacefulness. Know that beneath even the most chaotic mind is a full place of deep, quiet serenity within. Do whatever ever helps you dive deep to find it. Dance, take some rest, meditate, do yoga, write, paint, make love, make music. In that quiet serenity within, you'll be leaving unnecessary chaos behind and you'll be presented with the gift of a new way forward, right? I mean, you, you had the retreat card, right? <laughs> so I love this, this beautiful stepping away. This, you're being called across the waters out of the fray, out of the chaos to really focus on who you are and who do you want to be. So I am liking this for you, Scorpio. Um, and this is what they have for you for the month of June. And if you're looking for more messages of love from above, there's a couple things that you can do. First, you can give this video a little thumbs up by clicking the like button. That tells me that you're enjoying these videos, but it also tells YouTube that you are, and they'll bring more similar videos to you. The second thing that you can do is click that subscribe button, and that does give you access to the notification bell. And when you go in there, there is an option for all when you go into your settings, and if you select that two things happen one you'll be notified right away when I put out new readings and two you're also notified when I go live on YouTube to provide free readings currently I go every Wednesday through Sunday night at 7 p.m. Mountain Time and then also additionally on Friday Saturday and Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. Mountain Time
also doing all this stuff it helps spread the zen love and you're part of the love tsunami because when you like or share one of my videos comment on one of my videos subscribe to my channel doing those things makes the youtube algorithm so crazy giddy happy excited wants to automatically share the videos on my channel with other people as well so if you are inspired to do any of those things i mentioned please know i'm ever ever so grateful and these readings are general readings if you want even more specific information and answers for your specific life i do offer personal readings at a reasonable rate all that information is listed in the description box of the video down below all right beautiful soul as you're going throughout each and every moment of every day of your adventure please know that every second you are unconditionally loved by the mother and the father of all things and of course i love you too so have an amazing journey i'm sure we'll be talking soon in the meantime much love to you you hang in there and you take care